Hey there, everybody, and happy Bialy Day. Sounds like holiday with a B, Bialy Day. Eh, I tried. Uh, you've got me au naturel today. No makeup. I've had a busy day. Did a personal training session by Facebook. Went to the dermatologist, and I want to get these going, and I just didn't have time to make myself as beautiful for you as I usually do, so you get what you get. Hopefully the recipe will make looking at this worth it. So I've already measured out my ingredients. There aren't a lot for Bialis. And by the way, Bialis, I would call them a first cousin to a bagel. Um, bagels are boiled, Bialis are not, but the dough is the same, or at least my Bialis have the same dough as my bagels. And um, they have a nice big indentation in the top where we put this glorious onion and poppy seed mixture and then we bake them. And my husband actually likes them more than the bagels. I don't. I like the Bialis. I love the bagels, so, but they're both really good. So this recipe is not very long. It has 300 grams of water. And I'm gonna remind you that if you have a machine with a rest or preheat cycle, water comes straight cold from the tap. Um, but if you don't have a machine with the rest preheat cycle, you need to warm your liquid, okay? Um, 488 grams of high gluten flour. Now, really, you could use bread flour, probably. Um, I use the King Arthur Sir Lancelot high gluten flour, and I think they now just call it high gluten flour. But when I bought it, it was still Sir Lancelot. And um, I like the Bialis and the bagels for that matter, much more chewy. I don't want them fluffy and doughy. So I like the high gluten flour because it gives that texture that I prefer. But could you use bread flour? Yes. And I know some of you are thinking, well, couldn't I use bread flour and add some vital wheat gluten? Um, I probably, I just never use gluten. I don't have it in the house. I don't even add it to my wheat bread, so that's up to you. All right, so it was 300 grams of sugar, 488 grams of high gluten flour. This is 24 grams of sugar. I put it on one side, because I can see it, and it's going in, but that's okay. And this is my salt, five grams. And of course, the lovely yeast goes in a little hole in the middle. SAF instant yeast is all I ever use. And I'm gonna get this going on the dough cycle in the machine. And I will update you on the, if the dough is too wet, too dry, because every time you make a loaf of bread, you must read your dough. Not like a book, <laughs> but you must look in the dough and make sure that it is not too wet or too dry. I do have a video on my channel, reading your dough too wet, too dry, that you might want to take a look at, but I'm going to be checking it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hello. Well, there is no rule about how you cut up your onions, but for this recipe, you want them to be pretty tiny. And you know, I'm a lazy girl. <laughs> and I, if I'm cutting up more than just a tiny bit, I am going to use my food processor. You know, I never put my food processor inside a cupboard or anything. I use it probably close to every day. I even make cookie dough in here. I have a stand mixer. It's away, you know, in a corner somewhere. I do use it, but I only use it for if I make cake or matzo balls. And that is it. So food processor is your This friend. was about an onion and a half, by the way, people. And that's so like, I don't know, I have to have a food processor. And by the way, don't buy anything less than a 14 cup capacity. Those little prep ones, they're useless. If you're going to get a food processor, get one that's 14 cup. I wish, I have a 20 cup up in the cupboard somewhere that's like 50 years old, but I don't use it that often. But this is a 14 cup and that's the standard size. And it works, I can put a double recipe of cookie dough in here and it takes it. All right. The dough has been kneading for about five minutes. I'm gonna open it up and check it out. Wow. 
Ain't you pretty? You don't want it to be sticky where it sticks to your hand, but you want it to be tacky, nice and smooth. I don't have to add any flour and I don't have to add, add any liquid. It is perfect. And I have some sizzling, yummy, salted butter. I used Kerrygold butter. Any butter would probably be just hunky-dory here. And uh, I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit. And I'm not going to put you to sleep by making you watch me saute these onions because that would be really boring. But all I have in the pan is purple onion. And you saw me chop it in the food processor. We already talked about that. And I am just going to saute these till they're sort of uh, translucent, I guess you could say, till they're cooked. I'm not going to caramelize them. Do I need to caramelize them? Sort of, kind of, not quite, not really necessary because they're going to be baked. And I don't want them to be that well done. But I'm just going to pat these all out now that I've gotten them all coated with the butter. And I'm just going to stir them every few seconds until they're done and then we will add poppy seeds maybe a little kosher salt like emerald bam and then um, after that filling is done we'll just let it cool because i don't want it to be hot when my dough comes out and i'm making the bialis so onions uh speak ellen onions are pretty much Done. Uh, I made, I wouldn't call it a mistake exactly, but maybe a slight error in judgment. I really should have used a yellow or brown onion. <laughs> so that's okay. The Viali's will have pink onion looking. It doesn't matter. It's going to taste wonderful. But I should have used not a purple onion. <laughs> um, the other thing I want to say is those of you who keep kosher and need the bagels to be Perev, you could certainly saute them in oil and not use butter, obviously. Um, well, maybe not obviously, because people ask me that kind of thing a lot. You can do whichever you like. It's just a fat. I like the flavor of the butter. Oil would be just fine. So these onions are cooked. I am going to put in just, I don't know what that is, about half a teaspoon of salt and um, I didn't measure that, and the reason, I, it's kosher salt, and I know it, you're supposed to go. But when I put my fingers into the kosher salt, it goes up under my fingernails, and it's gross. I don't like that. Plus, I never feel like it's clean, even though I've just washed my hands. So a little salt. I have no idea how much poppy seed. Again, this is kind of a personal deal, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> I don't even know, a couple tablespoons maybe, and and see how that looks when it's all mixed together. I've turned off the heat, by the way. Once the onions are done, you don't need heat. Yeah, this would be a little bit prettier. The poppy seeds would show some more. We'd see them, you know, more with uh, the yellow or the brown or even a white onion. I wouldn't call my purple onion a mistake exactly, but maybe it wasn't quite the best choice. Oh well. Um, so I think I want just a bit more poppy seed. <laughs> All right, a heavy sprinkle and just gonna mix that up. And after we get the dough out and it's ready to fill, we will plop some of this oniony poppy seed goodness in the middle of those luscious bialis. And what I'm going to do right now, uh, after we turn off the camera, is simply transfer these to a plate and kind of spread them out a bit so they have time to cool because the dough will be ready in about half an hour. 
You can see that I've spread this out on a plate just to cool down. So we have 10 little Bialy balls ready to play. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is simply put five on one baking sheet, five on the one I have on the bottom. And I'm just going to have fun. <laughs> Flatten them out. Oh, I made a little flower on my hands. Oh, air bubble in that one. Did you hear the squeak? <laughs> this is fun part. Of course, the you know the gluten in there is making them shrink back up, but that's okay. They're musical. So I'm gonna flatten them. And again, cover them and let them rest for about half an hour. And then we'll be back. I'm gonna do the other five in a second. So I was too lazy to get out the little strainer to dust with flour. So I just sprinkled some flour around the edges and some got on the onion and that won't hurt anything. It'll soak into the moisture of the onions and it'll bake just fine. I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes and then finally we'll get to bake them and see what they look like. And they are about to go in to bake and become a beautiful golden brown. Yay for Bialy's. Look how pretty these are. Even with the red onion on the inside. <laughs> Oh yeah, so I'm gonna move them to cool on my rack. 